welcome back to my channel. I am going to be sharing Rowan's birth story. Yeah, I just thought I'd jump on, give you a little glimpse into how it went. I loved watching these when I was pregnant, just to know everyone's birth stories. I know that everyone has a different one. It never goes as smoothly as you think when you take your prenatal classes. <laughs> never that smooth trust me I had a really easy pregnancy like thankfully but um, yeah my birth story did not go as planned um, going in I had a very loose birth plan it was literally just I wanted to have the skin to skin after her birth and um, if I was gonna take anything first like any meds it was gonna be laughing gas but that wasn't available because of COVID so I did an epidural Spoiler alert. <laughs> then uh, the other thing on my list, I think, was just that Curtis was going to um, announce what it was, the gender, because we went in not knowing if she was going to be a boy or a girl. So that's literally the loose <laughs> birth plan I had. I went in um, because we went through the prenatal class. I hear everyone's birth stories. Everyone's different. Nothing goes as planned for the most part. If you're lucky and it goes, everything goes exactly as you plan, then kudos to you. <laughs> Like you lucked out, um, but yeah, I just thought I'd just jump on, share our birth story, and hopefully it helps you. Hopefully it gives you, I don't know, just a little ease of mind going in if you're pregnant. Mine wasn't anything negative. I didn't think of it as negative at all, and I think you just have to go in with an open mind. If you're going to the hospital, you're in the best hands. They, the nurses, if you're in Vancouver, I highly recommend going to BC Women's. It was a great experience, both Curtis and I agree. The nurses are so friendly, the OBGYNs. They explained everything uh, calmly and in terms that we understood our options. And everyone there, even from like the, um, the staff that delivers the food from the cafeteria to, I don't know, just people admitting you. Um, even the ladies that were um, downstairs that like walk you through where you're going. I'm not even sure if they're nurses or not. They might just be administrative people. Everyone was so friendly at BC Women's. Highly recommend having a baby there. Felt like I was didn't have any anxiety because I felt like I was in the best place to have a baby. I'm not really into having a home birth for my first birth. <laughs> it's just because I didn't know how I was going to turn out and luckily I chose not to. And yeah, so let's dive into the story. <laughs> All right, so um, I was about 41 weeks pregnant and my oh, my midwife and I agreed that I should go to the standard ultrasound and uh, fetal monitoring the tests they do at the hospital. So I went in and we already, the day before we agreed that um, by the end of the week I should be induced just because, you know, it was 41 weeks, um, what was going on in the world with COVID and everything, just didn't want to prolong it. And I agreed. So we went and did the ultrasound the next morning. I went and had like th two to three hours of sleep. We went and I did the ultrasound. Curse was allowed in with me at that time. I'm not sure if it's changed because of everything going on, but he was allowed to go into the ultrasound with me. And the technician, the ultrasound technician there was like, um, wow, there's no fluid. <laughs> Not exactly what you want to hear at 7.30 in the morning, 41 weeks pregnant. And she's like, well, I'm going to go and talk to the doctor. And um, you guys should be planning to have your baby really soon because there's no fluid. And we're like, okay. Me and my midwife said that if there was anything that would, they, um, emergency kind of thing, they, they would call her and she would meet us at the hospital. So she didn't say that yet. So I was like, okay. And then she's like, yeah, I'm just going to take all these tests. I'm going to talk to the doctor here I'm gonna have them like call your midwife and I'm like oh okay so I still have to go to the field monitoring test so we went over there Curtis wasn't allowed in he went um, and tried to grab a coffee at the Tim Hortons there and uh, I just said I would I would text him or call him if give him updates or if when I'm done so I went into this little room this is the size of my living room and the ladies that work in there are fantastic by the way they are the friendliest people I've ever met in my life um, really upbeat and just try and keep everyone calm in there and I did the testing and of course my baby that loved to move around and kick and this everything all day long was silent in the womb when they're doing this test so I had to drink some ice water and try to get her to wake up and she kind of did it at the end but they weren't too worried um, just because 
I mean, the ultrasounds also show that she was moving around, and I said that she's been moving around, like, all day, except for, obviously, when a test comes along. And uh, they just kept telling me, like, oh, um, we looked at your stuff, and um, just based on what the other testing was, that you should probably expect to have a C-section today. And I was like, what? And they're like, oh, if your husband, husband hasn't already, like, maybe, like, go get him to get your... Um, the hospital bag and everything and I was like oh my god so I'm texting Curtis and I'm like okay hey, not to panic but if you want to go home and grab the hospital bag and maybe shower because he hasn't showered uh, I showered that morning but he didn't and shower and like grab something to eat and then come back because they said gonna be a while I'm gonna have to finish this test and then I'm gonna have to be admitted to the ER part and then um, the doctor my midwife would meet us there and then chat to us about our options. So you have time to go grab everything and then come back. So away he goes and uh, I went over to the ER with the nurse from the field monitoring and they admitted me there and they waited for a while and I always bring snacks in my bag so I had snacks and I had my gigantic thing of water so it was fine. And the doctor, the nurse comes in and takes, you know, asks me a bunch of questions for, you know, being admitted and like where how I'm feeling and stuff that day and blah 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 and then um, Curtis gets there just before the midwife gets there and so they get there at the same time and she checks to see if I'm dilated and stuff and nope <laughs> wasn't dilated um so that was like oh god this is not going to be fun and we already talked about like possibly being induced and everything later that week so the OBGY on call comes in and then she goes over testing and she says that definitely I'm going to be admitted that day that that's a that's a definite and uh, that I had a couple options I could uh, have the um, medically induced um, option of um, it's like a hormone or something they give you and I wasn't really into that and then there was the other one where they put you on oxytocin and then they also would put like um not like a catheter, I'm not even sure what it's called, I can't remember, but it's like this little inflatable ball that they would insert up into your cervix so that it would put pressure, so hopefully that it would open up and then start the whole, you know, water breaking and everything like that. They didn't want to, like, manually, like, make my water break because there was no fluid in the womb at this time, like, very little, and they were worried that if they broke the water, that she might um, collapse onto the umbilical cord, and then, uh, no, we don't want that to be a possibility. So um, we chose to do, you know, being beyond oxy oxytocin, and then hopefully that speeds up the labor or starts it, and then insert the, um, the inflatable ball catheter, not catheter, but oh my god, I don't know what it is. And it goes up, and then, yeah, we agreed on that as a plan of action. So they s agreed also to let me go home because I wasn't expecting to be admitted that day <laughs> and go and they said go home have a good meal try to have a nap and have a shower and stuff because you won't be showering for a while and you'll just feel like so much better so we went home I had like three hours before I was supposed to be back to be admitted at four o'clock in the afternoon and yeah I was in the hospital from like seven to one that's <laughs> that was a long morning um and then we went home Chris made me some like a big lunch and then him, himself a lunch as well. And I had a good nap. I had an hour and a half nap. And then um, I had a quick shower and like put some new clothes on. And then we grabbed the bags and then we went to the hospital. So being admitted into BC Women's is a breeze. You pre-register. So they already have your information. You just give them your name. And then I guess they just verify your care card number and stuff. And everything's in there. And then they give you your bands. And then the other nurse um, for the birthing suites takes you up. And then we just had our um, it was it was a new wing, so it was fairly new birthing suite, and it was really nice. And they had the TV and everything up there, and you could like hook up your Spotify and stuff. It was great. Uh, and uh, we checked in. They told me to go to the bathroom and everything, and they told me to eat something again. So luckily, I was planning ahead. I packed a couple peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, <laughs> and of course I had like my snack bag. You saw my hospital bag video you see that I had like a little ziploc bag of like granola bars and other snacks in there um so we had those I had a peanut butter and jelly sandwich I had like a couple crackers I drank a bunch of like water and a juice box and then um that was cut off <laughs> I was only allowed to be drinking water from there on 
um, and ice chips and stuff. So I did that and then I got dressed into the gown and, and everything and I had my slippers and I went to the bathroom which was not <laughs> something I'm used to having a, the toilet with no door and two nurses in the room and Curtis. Every time I had to go to the bathroom, I'd be like, can you guys just leave the room for a few minutes? <laughs> they, they were totally cool about that. And then uh, they started, uh, after maybe we were an hour and a half we were there, uh, they you know did some other, they put the IV in my hand. That was the first for me. I've never been admitted to a hospital before. Um, so this is all first for me. So that was, I think that was more painful than anything, uh, was having the IV put into my hand. Oh my God, it was brutal. And they started the oxytocin and I felt nothing. There was way for like a few hours of feeling nothing. Um, maybe just like light cramping. I would call it like menstrual cramping, but I said on the light days and they were like, wow, you have a high pain threshold because they're reading the church and you could see like I was having contractions. Oh, and the feel monitoring thing, they kept asking if I could feel like contractions and if I felt any like Braxton Hicks. And I was like, nah, I haven't felt anything this whole time. And they're like, oh, funny enough, because you're going, you have those right now on the machine. And I was like, feel nothing. <laughs> so anyways, and we were, so let's go, I digress. So back, back to the thing. It was feeling nothing, just relaxing. We were watching some, I don't know, I can't remember, like HGTV or something on the, on the television in the room chatting to the nurses. They were super friendly. There was like two of them in there. And the OBGYN came in and checked on me periodically. It's now like seven o'clock in the evening. And I was just bouncing on my ball. Uh, Chris and I were just hanging out. I thought first, try to have a nap. It's kind of hard because they come and they check on you every, I don't know, every few minutes. And then they have these uh, these like discs so they put them like their monitors like heart monitors and they put them on your belly so there's one that's supposed to be for you and then one's supposed to be for her so and they kept sliding around on me and they always have to fix them every time I like want to lay on my side they have to come and fix I feel like there should be better technology <laughs> that's all I have to say that was the most annoying part because anytime I go to the bathroom they had to readjust them there was one point in there where they're holding them on my belly and I'm trying to go to the bathroom. Completely embarrassing. <laughs> most, one of the most embarrassing moments of my life. Now I don't care. I had a, I gave birth and everyone saw everything. And then they upped the oxytocin because nothing was going on. And then I started to feel a little bit of contraction, still like nothing major. And then they upped it again. And then I started having more intense contractions, but still nothing I couldn't handle. Curtis was fantastic. He helped me out. He made sure I was doing all my exercises that I was supposed to do. We learned in prenatal. And then there was, then they put the ball thing, I can't remember what it's called, that they put up into your cervix. And then I went to the bathroom. And then that fell out when I was going to the bathroom. And then that was, and then her heartbeat dropped. And then that's when everything like shit the bed. <laughs> and then, um, so it's put into the bed and then they had, they put an oxygen mask on me and then they were like worried about, um, her heartbeat. It like, dipped down really low. Curtis could probably remember it dipped down really, really low. And then they wanted, um, me not to get out of bed again because they kept fearing that every time I got, went up to the bathroom, her heartbeat would drop. And <laughs> so I'm like, I don't know what I'm doing wrong. And then, so the catheter thing fell out or whatever it's called, the little ball thing. And then they um, decided not to try to put that back in again. I just popped out. I'm not even, I guess it was just completely closed up there. I'm not, not even sure. And then, um, and then, then contractions got really intense. Um, and Chris was like, fantastic again. He's trying to make me like, um, try to rub the, the back and try to get me to bounce, move around. And then um, we had to talk with the OBGYNs that were on call, and they came in and said that I checked to see if I was dilating. I wasn't really dilating. I think it was maybe at like a centimeter or something then. And then this is after, hmm, came in at four. This is probably like at eight hours in. And they were um, giving my options of saying, well, you still have a few hours, and it's not even, even early labor, <laughs> which could be like 12 hours. And so that you maybe should consider getting epidural just because you need maybe try to get some sleep. 
and uh, you might, we still need to pump all the stuff into you and hopefully it starts labor. So maybe you want to do the epidural and the pain relief. And I was like ho-humming about that for a while. It wasn't part of my plan and I wanted to, I don't know, I, just, I felt like I wanted to have a more, try to have a more natural birth, but I was in such pain at that point. I was also exhausted because the night before I got like two hours of sleep and then that little bit of a nap. So we agreed to do the epidural. And then by that time I was having like heavy contractions. Try to have an epidural <laughs> when you're contracting like um, big time. And then they're also trying to hold this monitor on your tummy. So anyways, Chris was great. He made me breathe through it all. I couldn't move because you're not supposed to move when they have that needle going into your spine. Um, that was like half an hour of the anesthesiologist. Oh, he also uh, put it in my spine, but it um, it wasn't the right place or something. So he had to. <laughs> no, it was the right place. They couldn't get. He couldn't get it in. It was too tight of a spot. So oh. Change location. So he, the anesthesiologist can put the needle in because it's too tight of a spot in one part of my spine. So he had to like move it and then put another spot. <laughs> a little bit of delayed still. And then we, um, that was all done. And then they're like, okay, try have a nap. And I was so into having a nap by then. <laughs> and um, I guess while I was napping, I think we were out for like two or three hours. And we were napping, the, the heartbeat went down again. And I remember waking up and I said, oh, could I go to the bathroom? And you really need to pee. I feel like I have to pee now. And she's like, you can't, I'm not letting you leave the bed. You're not allowed to leave the bed because every time you, you went to the bathroom or walk around, the heartbeat would drop. And it was dropping when you were sleeping. And I was like, oh, okay. So she gave me the option of having to use a bedpan or put, install a, a catheter. And I said, whatever, I don't care. Just put the catheter and I'm not going to be able to like go in a bedpan with people in the room watching me. Like this is not going to happen. And I was, uh, also wasn't entirely 100% sure if I had to pee. But you know, you just, you have this belly. You think you have to pee. You've been asleep for a while. I drank so much water. And then, uh, so she, they was, Curtis got up, he had to help her lift my leg to put the catheter in. Catheter goes in, and I could still feel like I was having contractions, but I, they were more manageable at that point with the epidural. And I also had sleep, so I felt way better. But the heartbeat kept dropping, so the OBGYN and the, I think there was, there was two of them. I wasn't sure if the other one was a resident or not, but either way, they were both fantastic. So they came in, they did another checkup, and it wasn't pro they also checked to see if it was dilated. I think it was like three centimeters and this was like 12 hours of being on the oxytocin and nothing, it wasn't progressing and it was very low fluid. So they couldn't break my water still because that was, um, a high risk, um, factor. So we had a chat and we chatted about having a C-section, which I already knew was they're going to bring up because they brought up in that morning and just my midwife also said that could have been an option down the road. And I was, we looked at Curtis, Curtis looked a little white to me, <laughs> but we, um, I agreed that the C-section was best because at this point it wasn't an emergency C-section. They still said I could have gone on with the oxytocin for another few hours, but since I wasn't progressing at all with it, as most people do on it, that kickstarts your labor a little bit earlier. It, it was the best choice of getting in there with a C-section, especially with her heartbeat dropping and there's low fluid. They didn't want to take any risk of it continually going on like this. So we agreed a C-section. The OR was open. They said that there literally was like a half hour and I would be in there. And so they just got me kind of prepped. Um, <laughs> I had gel nails on. They kept, they, I guess they would remove your nail polish going in, but they couldn't take off the gel nails at that point. So that was, they didn't have to worry about that. And I just got a wax a few days ago. So it was already prepped pretty much. Um, so the Curtis had to grab all the stuff from the room, pack it all up. And then they put it into a locker room and then they eventually, they, you don't get to go back to that birthing suite unless you are vaginally having a birth in there. Then you get to hang out in there for a while and then they eventually move you to the um, post-labor ward. Um, and so that's, they bring your stuff to the locker so Curtis could take it after to the room we're going to be going in post-op. So we went to the OR, uh, another anesthesiologist met me in there and he I guess topped me up. And then uh, the midwife showed up in the room and she was just, 
um, telling me that I had um, made the right decision, how I was feeling. At that point, I honestly was just feeling pretty calm about it. I <laughs> eagerly calm about it. I was just more excited to meet her. It means that Curtis told me that she would come out early. We meet her early. And that um, I felt like I was in the best hands. I felt like the OBGYN, the senior one, she was very calm. She explained everything calmly and gave you all the information that you needed and was very patient if you had any questions. I just felt like I was in good hands. Everyone in there, the nurses, the other doctors, anesthesiologists, the midwife, everyone had a calm demeanor. So I wasn't feeling like panic or any anxiety about it. And they even asked me like, oh, are you fine with this playlist? <laughs> and how are you doing and blah, blah, blah. And do you know the gender? And is it, um, is Curtis gonna call it out? And I said, yes, I think he wants to announce it when, it when she comes out or, well, we didn't know if she was a she, but I just said they at that time. And um, I was just laying there and then Curtis was allowed in just before they started surgery. And um, then he sat up behind the curtain with me and um, I could tell he was pretty nervous. <laughs> and I just first felt weird and calm. Like it, they, they top you with so much medication that you don't feel anything down there. It was like a weird feeling. I would describe it like, like they were like, it was like they're tugging at me and I don't know, like massaging your inside, how the, the movement of what was going on. That's what it felt like. It also, like, I couldn't feel any pain. It just felt like a weird sensation, like they were inside. They were, like, rolling like rolling around in there. <laughs> um, and it just felt like a minute went by. And then they, um, and then I guess they brought her out. And um, they, just, they just said, what? Oh, my God, what a cute baby. And then I guess Curtis saw what it was or... Someone whispered, I don't know, someone whispered it at you, I don't know. Anyways, and he said it was a girl. No, I saw it, the, the bits and pieces. Yeah, he saw the bits and pieces and determined that it was a girl. And um, I think he was crying or something. And then... Um, determined. <laughs> I used my professional opinion. Yes. I'm no doctor, but it, it appears that it could be a girl. <laughs> yeah. Um, and yeah, then they just plopped her onto my chest. They, I guess they kind of cleaned her a little bit, plopped her onto my chest, and then she hung out with Chris and I for, I don't know, it felt like very brief. Um, and then they had to whisk her away and got weighed, and then I think just cleaned her and checked her, and then she was then placed back onto uh, my chest again while they were cleaning me up, stitching me back up. And it was really cool because when they went to get cleaned over in the corner, Chris went over there, but they had this monitor they brought down in front of me because I was still laying there and I could see the watch the whole thing I could watch her um in her little bed thing over there being cleaned up and like poke prodded at and then like I wasn't missing out on that I think that was really great I think that was fantastic and because you I couldn't really look move my head around too much just because of how I was situated on the table and and um yeah it was just a really confined little space I felt like and um also I was kind of out of it but I don't know, I didn't cry when she came out. <laughs> I feel really weird about that, but it was also on the um, the drugs <laughs> and just, I think, exhausted. And I think that it wasn't a vaginal birth. I didn't experience that whole elation when she comes out. But nonetheless, I was very, very like happy and ecstatic that she came out. And... Anyways, it was a really great, it was a really great experience. Anyways, it was like, felt like it was like 10 minutes and they were done stitching me up. And then they cleaned me up and whatever and they rolled you around like you're like a, I don't know, like a piece of meat. <laughs> like you just, they rolled me over and cleaned me up or whatever. And then I think they were pretty much putting the um, pads on me and then my, um, like the mesh underwear is what they were doing down there but for me it just felt like they were just like rolling me back and forth and I couldn't even feel anything it was this really weird feeling and they were just chatting to me and telling me to make my my manicure <laughs> so it's just, um yeah the amount of times I got complimented on that manicure during the whole hospital stay was funny um and then they were just uh asking <laughs> like 
you know, uh, do we have any names and everything? Yeah, and we didn't have a name plan. We had a list of names for both genders, but we didn't narrow it down to like what per gender. So we it took us like a day to figure out what her name was going to be. And um, then they just wheeled us off into post-op. Um, this other little room, there's a couple other couples in there who just had, um, who were just out of surgery as well, I guess, when I was in there. And then she was on my chest. Uh, I had the shakes still from the anesthesia, uh, anesthesia coming, wearing off. And so um, Curtis had to do some skin to skin, which was also part of our plan as well. That he would do that eventually. But it just kind of, like, I, I just felt like I was going to like shake her off of me. It was such a weird feeling. I just couldn't stop shaking. Um, and I just felt like really weird and kind of like a hangover in a way because it's coming out of this and, uh, and a little bit of nausea, nausea and stuff came on as well. And then we we're just there in post-op and we were there for like, I think probably about an hour. You were also nervous though, cause you were paying such close attention to your own heart rate. Oh yeah, so they put the heart, like the heart monitor on my finger and because I had a gel polish, it, it threw it off. So it kept telling me it was dipping below whatever um, heart rate and I was kind of worried that I was having some bad reaction. Um, and so I kept like looking at this monitor that was right there, kept beeping like every two minutes and they had to come and like readjust the thing on my finger. And I was just panicking that I was gonna like die in the post off, I think. Um, and then it turns out they're like, one of them was like, oh, I think it's just your nail polish because I don't know why these things aren't made better that they, that a nail polish would affect your heart rate being monitored. But anyways, things to think of. There's someone out there that can make a better one. The opportunity right now. And then our post-op, yeah, we were in there for an hour and then we were just like, kept like skin to skin on Curtis and then myself and Curtis and myself. And then they um, whisked us off. I guess our room was ready or someone was ready to take us up. And then they just whisked us off into the post-op rooms, like birthing. I don't know what you call it. Birth ward? Baby ward? I don't know. Anyways, <laughs> it was just, there was a few of them in the hospital, but we were in this other one. It was like a little older area. And then we had a room for the couple days because I had a C-section. So we were there for two nights, three days. And yeah, I highly recommend staying as long as you can there. It's great to have the help and just um, being in a little bubble for a little bit before we had to go home. Um, so the fact that we had no visitors because of COVID, we weren't allowed to have my mom or anything come. I also asked my mom if she'd come with us when we gave birth to, and she couldn't, you only could have one support person in there besides if you're having a doula uh, and your midwife. But uh, yeah, we just were there for like three, or three days and then we came home. And then it's been fantastic since it's been uh, a <laughs> struggle at times with lack of sleep. Uh, breastfeeding is hard. Let me tell you that. That is, they make it look so easy in prenatal class. Like, oh, the baby just crawls up and it latches on. I'm sure that's the case for a lot of people, but not the case for us. And I have like fairly large um, breasts and <laughs> she just couldn't latch onto my nipples. So a nipple shield is what we've been using, and I pump now. Um, but I get into that in another video. And it's just been, yeah, it's been great. I think the silver lining of being at home during this whole uh, pandemic is that Curtis has been home a lot more and that he's had time to spend with her and we both had so much time just one-on-one -on -one with her and not had to worry about visitors and being anywhere for appointments as much as besides her midwife ones. And that it's, um, yeah, it's been just a nice time to do all this extra bonding with her. So that's Rowan's slash mine's birth story. And as you can see, it didn't go as planned. <laughs> well, it doesn't really have a plan, to be honest. But you have to roll with the punches when you go in to give birth. If you're doing a home birth, you also have to be also aware that at any time you might have to also go to the hospital if things go awry. And uh, I just felt like it was in the best hands of BC Women's. And I'm happy that she came out healthy that we both were healthy in the end and I wouldn't have done it any other way um as long as we were both intact and healthy at the end of the day that's all I care about I didn't care about anything else <laughs> that she came out in one piece <laughs> that was my wish 
So yeah, I hope that that was um, helpful for someone watching. <laughs> Don't freak out. Um, it was pretty calm for most of it. And I felt those labor pains and boy, women who do that naturally till the end. I know some people have a quick birth. Um, they may just only have be in labor for like a handful of hours. And wow, I wish that was me. <laughs> but uh, C-section it was. And um, I'm just glad it was an emergency C-section that I wasn't just like wheeled, whisked away like in a rush and not being able to digest it and um, feel like a little bit of panic and everything. I'm glad that it wasn't the case. Um, and that uh, Rowan is now here and we've been loving it. We've been having a fantastic two months. She turns two months this week, eight weeks, and it's been great. Lots of cuddles and snuggles and uh, she's just <laughs> grown so much. She came out at six pounds, 15 ounces and very long. Um, I think, what was she, like 21 inches, 20, something like that. Anyways, she was a very long baby. And now, I just weighed her today at home here, and she's about 14 pounds. So she's gained quite a bit of weight in the last eight, eight weeks. She's actually went surpassed her birth weight within a week of being home. So we do something right around this house. <laughs> and then, um, yeah, she's just been like cooing and like chatting and stuff lately more. And she's, uh, yeah, just more alert. And um, yeah, she kind of her little personality is coming out now. So it's been been fun but I'll do like another I'll do like a more of an update on her um, in another video and yeah just wanted to share the birth story she's sleeping right now so I <laughs> won't wake her up to show you um, but I'll just make it, maybe take a, like a picture and you can see it on the thumbnail of her and uh, yeah I'll just keep you guys updated as the year goes on of what's new with her and us and I will see you in the next video thanks for tuning in